first of all, I want to thank the senators here today from the Rural Regional Affairs and Transport Committee and for their work in bringing the Senate inquiry into regional bank branch closures here to sale. It's incredibly important that the senators get to hear from the banks themselves, but also from our community members, about the real world impacts of these bank branch closures on our regional communities. My advice to the banks is to stop being so bloody minded, stop being so bloody lazy, and actually start listening to customers and work with us on innovative solutions to deliver those services into the future. There is a very significant number of customers, whether they be small business and family business owners, or whether they're more vulnerable customers or people who don't trust online services or people who simply don't have access to online services. So a very significant number of customers who demand, who need face-to-face -face services and have every right to expect that from the big four banks. The big four banks have been getting away with murder when it comes to these bank branch closures. We need to stop it. Enough is enough and all options need to be on the table. If they're not prepared to cooperate, then the federal parliament needs to look at longer term solutions in terms of their licensing requirements. That's my personal view and I'm very interested to hear the evidence from Councils, but also from the small business owners that have these bank branch closures. Thanks, Derek. Uh, well, look, uh, uh, first of all, I do want to thank uh, the community of Sale who have come out in, in numbers here today to express uh, their views, their concerns uh, uh, about the lack of consultation that they get from the major banks uh, and their plans to strip financial services out from country towns. Uh, uh, it has been very clear this morning, very clear, uh, that the big banks are trying to sell sale a bunch of spin. Uh, they're trying to sell us a, a complete load of rubbish. Uh, they tell the local community, they tell politicians uh, that they do consult with them before these decisions when what we've been revealed today is that that consultation amounts to an email or if people are lucky uh, a phone call after a decision has been made. Uh, this is completely inconsistent with the commitments the banks have made uh, to governments uh, when they've said they will do impact assessments on closures, they are not doing impact assessments. The banks are doing a tick a box exercise uh, before they decide and make decisions to shut down branches uh, from their high rise corporate offices in capital cities. I'm glad that this committee has actually forced Westpac and National Australia Bank to come out uh, to a country town for a change because we also learned today that the first time uh, Westpac officials have spoken to local government was this morning. Uh, and only because they were really here for the Senate Committee. Uh, what we're going to do as a Senate Committee now is make sure that we do force proper communication from the banks with local towns. That's something I'm 100% focused on. We can't have a situation that consultation only occurs uh, when a bunch of senators turn up in town. This needs to be the standard practice of the big banks going forward. And we also need to work with communities through that consultation about how we can make sure financial services are provided to all Australians because it is an essential service. Derek, uh, Good afternoon, guys. It's great to be here in the beautiful town of Sale uh, this afternoon. Look, the three main pillars of any town are the hospitals, schools and banking services. Without banking services, small businesses can't operate, our volunteer organisations can't operate, and our most vulnerable people can't get access to essential services. What we've learned today is that the banks still make a lot of money out here in the regions. They're making increased margins as a result of more efficient transactional banking, but they're not prepared to share those profits with the people in the regions. They want to take those profits back to the big cities and pay themselves bigger salaries. And that's not fair to the people of rural and regional Australia, which is where most of the wealth comes from. So I'm calling on the banks to keep the branches open and share the profits with the people of Australia. Thank you. Uh, my, first of all, I want to compliment Senator Rennick for moving the motion that we all supported for the inquiry. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, and Senator Canavan is doing a marvellous job of chairing this committee. I also want to point out that a key, key factor in Australia's banking system is that the banks are protected. They have no responsibility, no accountability. They get risk-free profits guaranteed, and yet they can't provide community services. I'm normally opposed to interfering in commercial operations. But in this case, we need a community service obligations legislation because the banks are being propped up by the communities, by the taxpayers of this country. And so if they want that, then they have to come up with the obligations as well in, in reciprocation to the communities around Australia.
It's become very apparent very quickly this morning that what the banks are calling consultation is basically talking to themselves. Uh, they don't really understand the impact on regional communities of their closures uh, and that regional communities want to see local face-to-face -face services for uh, their own local communities and businesses. The opportunity now is for us to continue this inquiry around the country, uh, to continue receiving this evidence, uh, but also the fact that the banks have a business model that they want us to work with, uh, and increasingly Australians are using digital platforms. There is still a requirement and a desire in local communities to have and receive face-to-face -face local services, and I think the banks need to take that into account. They need to listen to the communities that are providing us evidence through this inquiry, have already provided us with that evidence, and make sure that they're actually providing the service that they claim they want to provide. Um, did any of the information um, about consultation surprise you today? That they weren't consulting with council um, or the branch itself? Either? Well, we, we already knew that the consultation that the banks had done was a Clayton's consultation. It didn't really amount to much. But what I suppose did surprise me uh, was the evidence that uh, not only did the consultation not occur, but then at least one of the banks had the summary to tell the local media that they had consulted uh, with, uh, with the local government, uh, when clearly they had just sent an email. Uh, that's just not good enough, and, and it shows that the banks here are not acting in good faith. Uh, I recognise there are challenges here continuing to provide the same level of uh, bank branches and financial services given the rise of online services, but there, there has to be an obligation on our banks to make sure uh, they work with local communities. Uh, I mean, all of these banks are making billions of dollars of profits and no one can understand why they can't seem to afford an airfare or a train trip or a car ride to come out to these towns and talk to people face to face. At least have the guts to do that before you make a decision to close. And, and, and Matt, it, it, sh it, it, it sh come in here. And Matt, it, it shows by, by telling us things that are misrepresenting what's going on, claiming consultation when there isn't any, it shows that they're above any accountability. They know that they might be held accountable. But thanks to Senator Rennick and Senator Canavan, we're starting to hold them accountable. I might just also add something too. That, um, what's also become clear in my time here, and uh, also from the representations of Darren Chester, is that the uh, Westpac branch in sale uh, must stay open. Uh, Darren's explained to me how important the services are here in this community. Uh, I've only spent some limited time here, but uh, it's a thriving town and uh, a town of 15,000 15, people deserves to have uh, proper financial services from all the banks. So Westpac clearly stuffed up uh, in how they came to the decision to close. We welcome the fact they've paused that closure thanks to our inquiry. We now call on them to reverse the decision to close uh, the sale branch uh, because this is a great town and uh, as Darren so, so forcefully represents it, uh, we should provide those services to towns of this size across Australia. Would you also hope that um, decisions are reversed across the country that have been made since this? Inquiry? Well, what we've called for as a committee is that all, all bank closures should be paused uh, while this inquiry is on and that people can have their voices heard. Uh, thankfully, uh, uh, eight Westpac branches are not being closed now because of that call from the committee, including the one here in Sale. Uh, the Commonwealth Bank has announced not the, the closure of uh, two, not closing two branches. Uh, now, look, I'll leave to other members of the committee what their views are right now on, on, the, on your question. Uh, from my perspective, I'm not speaking to the committee, but from my perspective, uh, uh, we, of course, we can't stop uh, all closures from ever happening. Uh, uh, population growth changes, there are obviously technology changes, but what, what I'm committed to do through this committee is making sure we work for solutions for people. And with technology, there are actually solutions. So one thing we didn't get to cover too much this morning is, but I've spoken to some of the banks saying they're not going to close as many branches now. They might go to reduced opening hours, but in the times when the doors are closed, they will, uh, they will have those workers patched into their call centre. And with technology, remotely still have their job, stay in the community, and at least keep an option uh, for people for face-to-face -face services. It's those kind of, that's kind of hard work that needs to be done by the banks here. Darren's exactly right. This is largely a consequence, I think, of laziness. Laziness in corporate offices who do not want to get uh, the, shoe leather, the shoe leather worn out by walking out in these streets and working out how we can make things work in, yes, a changing business environment.
We've had so many bank branches close in Gippsland over the last few years. Why has it taken so long for an inquiry to actually begin? Uh, look, it's, it's hard for me to comment as, as uh, Malcolm said, though, that, uh, we do give credit to, to Senator Reddick for bringing this forward. Uh, there have been other inquiries in recent times, so we've had a couple of parliamentary inquiries in the last couple of decades, and uh, there, there was also the Regional Banking Task Force established uh, around 18 months ago, it, it reported mid last year. Uh, that was something that was set up by the former government in response to uh, the closing of branches. Now, as the banks explained to more this morning, they were all involved in that and they've notionally accepted the recommendations of that. Uh, but uh, it, it, it does seem to be an opportune time for us to review whether or not those recommendations are faithfully being implemented or are they adequate to deal with the issues here. Uh, so the National Australia Bank, you might have seen this morning, tabled their impact assessment for MAFRA, which was one of the recommendations of the committee. Uh, that, that, at least they are doing that, but to me there seemed to be a lot of holes in that, that that information, as we heard, was just a desktop review. Uh, there was no actual direct on the ground consultation with people in MAFRA. Uh, so there's obviously here some things that we can push further. Uh, and on the, on the good work that the Regional Banking Task Force did and also make sure the banks are actually doing what they said they would do through that. What kind of consequences are there for if they don't follow? Yeah, right. well, can I, can I know, answer, answer, answer your previous question? Yeah. We've actually had a number of inquiries into uh, bank closures in the regions over the last 30 years and despite that we've seen bank branches go from 2,700 to less than 1,000 since 1975. And I think one thing, and I don't want to preempt any recommendations just yet, but I think one thing we need to seriously look at in this inquiry is making sure that the banks are actually held to account through legislation. Because we've given them the benefit of the doubt, and quite frankly, they've taken advantage of the fact that we've trusted the market, but they really haven't respected the rights and wishes of the people. So, you know, I, I know personally, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that we should have legislation to make sure they honour their banking commitments and their social licence. Um, and I think that'll be a key difference if I have my way, uh, and hopefully the committee will eventually you know, will agree, with me, agree with me at the end of the year, is that we may have to look at legislative uh, uh, changes to make sure the banks meet their commitments. I think a really simple additional answer to your question is that it demonstrates that banks have no accountability for what they're doing in this country. The major banks, that is. And we need to start thinking about the smaller banks and transferring our funds to them. Uh, and I'd also want to make the point that it's good to see people from across the parliamentary spectrum here. We've got the Labor Party, the Greens, the Liberals, the Nationals, One Nation. So that's encouraging to see because the banks are not serving the people of this country. The major that's, banks. That's one thing the banks do, they unite us all. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Good. Yes, right, thanks. Actually, yes, just quickly, Senator, uh, question for Senator Ratchet Jones, um, because you are Senator of Victoria. Um, has it alarmed you by the number of um, bank closures in regional Victoria in recent times? Well, it has, and I think you know, today is a uh, demonstration why this inquiry is needed. Uh, you know, I and all, all my colleagues here today, many others, have obviously been quite critical of the bank closures, particularly in the uh, regional communities and the impact that the closure has here. Sale or in other parts of Victoria are much more devastating than in So for us, it's also about trying to ensure that the banks do the right thing, that when they do go down that path, that there is a genuine consultation, not the consultation that we will tell today where they'll pick up the phone call someone is lucky enough to take their call one day before, but actually sit down with the community and actually have a fair deal of conversation about why is it the bank is planning to shut down a branch. Now, obviously there is devastating impacts, both social and economic impacts, and we want to explore those options and see whether we can strengthen legislation or, re or regulation, especially after the bank inquiry that the Royal Commission into banks. Uh, you know, they, they turned and changed their tune when the Royal Commission was on, and, and funnily enough, uh, when we announced this inquiry, uh, a number of back branch closures are now paused or ceased. So quite clearly when there is public pressure on the banks, uh, there is a benefit on the community coming together and actually saying to the large institutions like Big Four that we don't want you to close our banks. We want you to stay here in the local community and support the community because the banks do employ people and they do put money back into the community. But when those corporates in the big towns, in Melbourne, in Sydney, in Canberra, decide to make decisions,
has devastating impacts on local communities. And all you have to do is speak to many local members like Darren Chester and others who would tell you the devastating impact. And the one thing I will say too, especially after the bushfires, you know, it is so important to have these institutions in communities, in regional communities that have been devastated by natural disasters, especially here in Gippsland. You know, the fact that you've ripped out uh, a local branch is taking the guts out of a local town. And sometimes it is local towns that rely on their branch and their base to be able to be the lifeblood of their community. So, like all my colleagues today, I implore the banks to, to pause, to think, and actually to come to the table. And I look forward to hopefully uh, talking to the other big four uh, at a future hearing. And one last question you, Darren. How confident are you that um, this inquiry will lead to positive outcomes, particularly for Gippsland? Well, past history wouldn't be with confidence. Uh, there's been numerous inquiries, been a Royal Commission, and been, and I've, I've freely uh, offered apology to the Australian people that generations of members of Parliament have failed them in terms of holding the banks to account. Uh, we can't escape the fact that the banks have walked into our offices, told us a good story, and then gone on with bank closures. There were uh, two big waves of bank branch closures in the 1990s, and also in about 2015, 2016 onwards. And the banks have been treating their customers with complete contempt. So I hold out a lot of hope for this inquiry because it's coming, I think, at a different time, in a different atmospheric, uh, in the political circles, if you like, that you have brought together uh, members of parliament from all sides of the political divide. And they're passionate about getting a better deal for their customers, like the big four banks in particular. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist by nature. I'd, I'd like to think the inquiry will flesh out uh, more of the details. And we haven't heard today from uh, local council how they're so willing to cooperate and provide a new way of doing business, which still gives face to face services. And I just repeat my earlier comments that the banks have got to stop being so bloody lazy and actually start respecting their customers and their needs. And if they think they're going to get away with just you know, showing up at sale, giving a bit of evidence and heading off back to Melbourne and Sydney and have a little giggle on the way back about how good they did, well, they're kidding themselves. Because I don't think these people behind me are going to go away. I'm not going to go away. Uh, we're going to hold them to account. And I'm, I am inclined personally to look at their licences and some level of additional obligation to provide face-to-face -face services for those customers who have every right to expect access to their money if they can't access online services themselves. So I think it's a, a very important inquiry. I'm extremely pleased that uh, Matt and the team have come here to get slain to kick the inquiry off. And I think we're in for a pretty um, interesting few months as more evidence comes forward. And I just say to the big four banks, uh, start listening to the voices of these regional people who are hurting as a result of your actions, your actions which have been driven by greed and your own fat profits. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.